Let's see what happens. Moment of truth. Hello, and thank you for joining me for the next episode of Crossroads Rebuild. Last episode, we got the engine installed in the interceptor, and now I'm excited to get ready to get this thing started. So today, I'm going to begin that process, start working on the next things that need to be hooked up and set up and uh, prepared for starting the engine. Let me go ahead and show you what we're going to start working on. All right, so here is our 850 mile engine. And so let me give you a quick rundown on everything we need to do to get this engine ready to start. Well, for starters, I don't have any axles in this thing and I don't have an exhaust. So those are actually the first two things I'm gonna work on today. I've got the exhaust that came out of it, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed and then I'm gonna put my axle shafts in on both sides. Uh, next, I have one little spot over here that we overlooked when we were doing the framework, and I've got a broken weld, so I'm going to go ahead and get that repaired. Then I'm going to get all of the wiring up out of the way and put the core support and the crash bar back on so that we can then put the cooling system in it and get that all hooked up, set up, filled up, and all of that, and prepared. Now, the reason I want to put uh, the core support and all of that on first is because a lot of that wiring is actually going to attach to the core support um, and to the, the radiator and so on. And so it doesn't really make sense to try to get all that figured out before that stuff's in. So next thing I'm going to do is exhaust. Then I'm going to do the axles. Then I've got Jack actually heading over here. He's going to give me a quick tutorial on welding. I've actually been practicing a little bit. I'll show you a little bit of that. Uh, but I've been doing a little bit of practicing. It's not really going that well. I've never welded before. So he's going to come over here, give me a little tutorial so that I can fix that little spot. Once that's done, we can get the core support on and move on. Not sure how much of that I'll get to today, but that is the process. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so before I install the exhaust, sorry for the shadows here, before I install the exhaust, what I'm going to do is go ahead and wire wheel this and get uh, the mating surface cleaned up on all of these. I'm going to crawl underneath and do the same thing, get everything cleaned up. I've got brand new gaskets here, new nuts uh, for the exhaust studs there, and I am wearing safety glasses, as I recommend you do as well. So let me go ahead and get started on this, and we'll get this exhaust installed pretty quickly. work update here for you. The exhaust is mostly installed. It's firmly attached all the way to the back. Uh, here at the two manifolds, I do still need to tighten those up a little bit more, but we paused because Jack was here. As you saw, we did a little bit of welding and uh, he got started and was showing me some things and uh, I finished this weld and then we discovered the same place over here had popped loose. So this one, uh, again, he got it started and then I uh, moved on from there. That was a little bit better. These are not the world's prettiest welds, but they will certainly get the job done. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is real quick before I get back on the exhaust, so I'm going to clean those off, throw a little paint on them uh, so that doesn't rust. Then I'm going to get under here, tighten up the exhaust, and then we'll get on to the axles. So let's go ahead and keep going.
Alrighty, folks. So, quick update before we move on. First of all, welding's done, primed, and painted on both sides. And that'll blend in when it gets a little dirtier. Over here, we have our exhaust tightened up, both manifolds and then at the back, uh, all tightened up. And then we have both of our front axles in as well. It's hard to see, there we go. Those are both in and tightened up as well. So the last thing I would like to get accomplished today before I quit for the day is to go ahead and put the front end back on. We'll get the core support in and probably go ahead and put the crash bar in as well. And that's where I'll stop for the day. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Alrighty, that is where I'm going to stop for today. I've got everything accomplished that I set out to accomplish. Special shout out to my father-in-law, Danny, who is here helping me today and uh, doing a little bit of camera work and uh, a little bit of assistance. Uh, but today we got the welding fixed uh, there on the frame rails. It's also been primed and painted. We got the exhaust installed. We got, what else did we do? Oh, we got both front axles installed and everything torqued up and set, ready to go. Then uh, we also got uh, the core support installed as well. So this thing is ready for the cooling system to go in, which is where I'm gonna pick up the next day. So I'm gonna stop here for today, but uh, for you guys, like always, just a few seconds. See you then. And we are back. It is day two, and today I'm excited because I'm hoping, I'm hoping that today we get to start the engine for the first time in the interceptor since the wreck. So let me show you what I'm about to get into. All right, so the other day I got the front end put back on. So today, before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the uh, engine oil and the transmission fluid are filled up. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that oil filter. Really cool little tidbit here for you. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, a few of you Eagle Eye viewers already noticed this, but that is still the factory oil filter on this thing. Like I said, 850 miles on this engine. It is brand new. So anyway, I have, a new oil filter for it. Of course, for transportation, uh, the oil was drained out of it. So I'm just going to make sure that any uh, remnant that was still in it is out. So I'll drain it first, uh, change the filter, and then top up uh, the engine oil here. Then I'm going to go ahead and do tranny fluid, um, the ATF in there, get that topped off uh, so that I know those are good to go. Then we're going to go ahead and move on to the cooling system. So let me show you over here what I've got going on. All right, so over here on this table, I have my new radiator, my new condenser, uh, my new cooling fans, and then I've also got, um, that's the uh, auxiliary oil cooler, transmission cooler, whatever it is. Um, over here, I've got my um, coolant lines for the radiator, as well as my old broken uh, auxiliary cooler, and I also have the remnant of the old core support there. Uh, I've got those out because there's a few little uh, odds and ends, connectors and so on, um, bolts, screws, so on and so forth, that I need to get off of there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this stuff opened up and assembled over here on this table then we'll take it over here to the uh, to the interceptor and try to get it installed here and hooked up so that's what I'm gonna get into uh, take care of fluids then take care of assembly then get it installed and uh, hopefully at that point I'll be able to figure out some wiring so we can actually try to start this thing so wish me luck let's get started Alrighty, new oil filter, plenty of oil in it. I'll double check it after we finally run it for a little while. I've got a few quarts of tranny fluid added. I'm gonna let it settle a little bit before I add some more, so I'll check on that in a little while. But now that I've got that part done, I'm gonna move on over here to the table and start assembling our cooling system.
All right, a little bit of an update here for you. I have been trying to figure out this puzzle and uh, slowly but surely I am figuring it out. As you can see, I do have uh, the radiator and condenser, AC condenser installed. Um, you can see the radiator here from this side and condenser here. This is the auxiliary cooler uh, right there. I am missing a couple of screws, but I've got enough to at least hang it in place. So I've got that installed. Um, over here on this side, might be a little bit difficult to see, but I have finished installing uh, the AC lines here. So everything's hooked up to the compressor, to the condenser, and then of course running back into the car. Uh, so all of that's hooked up. Got my coolant overflow box um, put back in and uh, hooked up to the lines there. And um, well, the next step is to start reinstalling these hoses. Now, I pulled out the old oil cooler down here when we were disassembling the engine, and so I need to pull these hoses off and get them installed. That might be fun. I'll probably have to do it from below because, well, I'm not even sure you can see it back there, but uh, the oil cooler, there we go, is right there. So I'll probably have to get those from below, but um, just figuring out the puzzle of which hoses go where and which wires go where, so on and so forth. Uh, but it is slowly coming together. So I'm probably going to leave the fan out for the time being uh, so that I've got space to work here in the front. That'll be one of the last things I put in and uh, we'll get that soon. Um, but anyway, I am going to go ahead and keep working, get these hoses installed and uh, get one step closer to getting this thing started. So let's keep going. Another update here, as you can see, we've got some more hoses and stuff connected to our auxiliary cooler. And if we come around here, we can see we've got the whole cooling system hooked up. Every single hose is connected. So now that I've got the whole cooling system hooked up, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of a few other odds and ends here and then try to figure out the wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the battery box. I'm gonna go ahead and put in just the first part of the air system because there is a hose that runs from here and then into the side of the air system as well as that one so i want the whole vacuum system to be hooked up properly and then i'm going to try to figure out the wiring at least enough of it to get it started uh, we've got a cooling system we've got oil we've got tranny fluid so if we can just figure out the wiring we're basically there to give this thing a test start so that's what i'm work on now wish me luck Let's keep going. guys this is it I'm almost emotional because this is the moment I'm gonna try to start the interceptor I've got everything hooked up uh, except for the battery itself need to hook that up and then once that's done I'm gonna get in and I'm gonna see if I can start this thing so let's go ahead and hook that battery up and see what happens 
There's a dash light. No, excuse me, not a dash light, a uh, interior light on. That's a good sign. Let me hop in here real quick. That's lit up. That's something. Uh-oh. Hey. All right, so a few of these things are legit. Lift gate is open. Uh, change engine oil, it probably just thinks that's needed, although we just did that. Service advanced track, there's probably still something unhooked. Passenger door ajar, well, we don't have the uh, door electronics hooked up, so that's all legit. Let's see if we can clear that. All right. Let's see what happens. Moment of truth. Okay. It cranked. <laughs> And it sounded like it was getting ready to fire. We'll prime it again. All right. And let's just prime it a couple times here. Ha <laughs> ha She's running! And all right. It started, y'all. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. Don't want to run it for too long because it does not have coolant in it yet. But let's just give it a quick try again. Fired right up. Woohoo! It's running and it sounds amazing. Don't be alarmed by a little bit of smoke. There's oil and coolant and stuff all over everything. Wow, it sounds awesome. All right, gonna go ahead and set it off. Guys, I am so excited. I cannot express what I'm feeling inside right now. This interceptor, which was wrecked back in January or February, was salvaged and looked like an absolute pile, is running again. It's got a good engine in it with very low miles. It's all hooked up and it started up and sounds amazing. Now I don't wanna run the engine too long cause it doesn't have coolant in it yet or the fans and there's still quite a few things that aren't hooked up uh, here in the front. I've still got a lot of electrical stuff uh, that's not hooked up, but it starts, it runs and it sounds awesome. We have made huge progress and I believe this thing is going to be drivable here very, very soon. Guys, that is gonna be it for this episode. I am so stoked that the Interceptor lives again. There's still a lot of work to be done, but we had a huge breakthrough today getting this engine, this new engine that we'd never heard run before. We finally got it in, hooked up and running. It's been a long day working today to get it to this point, so I'm gonna cut it off for the night, but we have lots of work coming up in future episodes. Need to finish the wiring, need to start putting the front end together, need to get that dash and airbags replaced, and here pretty soon, go ahead and get the title work done so I can get my rebuilt title, getting it ready for a road trip in October. That is my plan. I'm gonna take it on about a round trip. It's probably uh, over a thousand mile road trip in October. So just about a month and a half. So there's a lot of work to do to get ready for that. So stay tuned for upcoming episodes as we get deeper into this and start making this thing look like a vehicle again. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't follow me on social media, I encourage you to do so. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So you can find me there where I post updates periodically in between videos. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe. You're gonna wanna subscribe so you can see future updates on The Interceptor, as well as other projects I have coming up. And then go ahead and drop a like on this video if you're excited that The Interceptor has started again. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.